The topic for discussion is epilepsy. Epilepsy is actually a condition where the patient usually have tendency for seizures. So what is a seizure? A seizure is an abnormal clinical activity which is usually actually caused by an abnormal discharge, electric discharge within the brain. In patients with epilepsy, there will be a uh, tendency for seizures and multiple number of seizures uh, occurring at different frequency of time in a longer duration occurs. Usually, a single seizure might not be an evidence of epilepsy, but it usually calls for further investigation to check whether it is an epileptic condition or not. Usually, this epilepsy is uh, usually classified based upon its clinical conditions or any injury to the brain and uh, any pathological activity that is been happening. So what is the definition of this epilepsy? Epilepsy is characterized by an abnormal, recurrent and excessive neuronal discharges that are precipitated by many different disturbances within the central nervous system. It is also characterized by a chronic recurrent paroxysmal changes in neurologic function that are caused by abnormal and spontaneous electric activity within the brain. So coming to the epidemiology, usually both sexes are involved and familial tendency is usually seen in case of epileptic patients. Younger children are more commonly involved when compared to adults and in some studies women are more commonly involved than men. However, there is equal predilection for both the sexes. It is also divided into uh, the period, this epileptic period usually divided into three phases. One is ictal phase pre-ictal phase and post-ictal phase. Ictal is nothing but the time where the seizure occurs. Pre-ictal phase is something of, is nothing but like a prodromal phase which actually precedes the seizure condition and uh, it is usually manifested like uh, any aura. Patient will not be, uh, will have irritation to sounds, any other shocking activity as such. It is actually a, a uh, it is something like an alarming sign that this uh, further incident is going to happen. Postictal phase is a phase which is usually a depression in the neurologic function and here what happens is seizure usually stops in this postictal period. Interictal is an individual is usually at the baseline of neurologic function. Now coming to the etiology. Uh, it is usually primary and secondary. Primary usually have a, a genetic or familial history and other uh, etiologic conditions include a diffuse cerebral insults. Where such as encephalitis, anoxia, any storage disorders, etc. And other metabolic disorders such as hypocalcemia, hyponatremia, hypoglycemia, porphyria, hypoxia, and renal and hepatic failure conditions also will precipitate or may be the cause of this seizures. That and will uh, eventually uh, transform into epilepsy. Certain drugs and toxins such as excessive use or abuse or alcoholic abuse and antidepressants, phenothiazines, amphetamines and local anesthetics, metronidazole and drugs uh, which are actually a drug or any uh, alcohol withdrawal are also known to cause epilepsy and any cerebral trauma especially during birth or uh, in case of any head injuries, in accidents etc. any infarction or any hemorrhage can also lead to epilepsy. There are various structural region, lesions that are occurring within the brain where such as vascular malformations, aneurysms, any cerebral tumors, any cysts or hydrocephalus are various conditions that are usually uh, man, uh, precipitate this uh, epilepsy. Now coming to the infections such as meningitis, encephalitis, any abscess, emphyma, syphilis, tuberculosis, HIV, toxoplasmosis etc. are various conditions which also uh, precipitate this epilepsy. Inflammation such as sarcoidosis, multiple sclerosis and SLE conditions also uh, can lead to epileptic conditions. Now coming to the classification, as I already said, well, this classification is usually based upon uh, clinical events, then you have any pathological conditions, any injuries within the brain or any biochemical changes that have been happening within the body or brain system. Coming to the, uh, based on the seizures, the clinical types, they can be classified as uh, partial seizures or complete seizures, tonic-clonic seizures, tonic uh, seizures or atonic uh, seizures, clonic seizures etc. These all comes under the clinical type of the seizures. And next we have some electrophysiology which will include focal or uh, focal uh, uh, sharpness, sharp face or diffuse sharp face and based upon the lesions or any injury within the brain, 
which includes only at the uh, some specific sites like cerebral cerebral system or uh, we also have like temporal frontal parietal uh, regions of the brain at this particular locations then it is called as focal then we have diffuse and we also have generalized so these are based upon the lesions that are occurring in the bone in the brain uh, other classification includes partial seizures which can be either focal or local which in, this includes simple partial seizures complex partial seizures and partial seizures uh, which are evolving to secondarily generalized seizures. We also have generalized seizures which is absent seizures, myoclonic, tonic-clonic, tonic seizures and atonic seizures and some uh, seizures are actually unclassified epileptic seizures can also be seen in these cases. Coming to the generalized clinical features, usually these patients have a blank stare. They actually look uh, look like, look blankly. They stare, uh, they have a uh, peculiar blank stare kind of uh, vision or facial expression. Their patients are usually at the time of epilepsy, they are usually in confusion. They have they uh, exhibit stupor, memory loss. There can be some behavioral personality changes also. Patients are usually irritable. They have hallucinations and uh, they also show illusions and sense of fear. Loss of loss or impaired consciousness and, and uh, in some cases, in severe cases, they also can land up into coma. They also have unpleasant taste or smell. Headache and muscle aches are usually seen in these cases. They have frequent eye blinking or nystagmus. Muscle rigidity can be seen and incontinence to fur, urine and feces can also be seen in these cases. Patients have dyspnea, that is difficulty in breathing and they also have a, a particular stertorous, stertorous breathing. We also see uncoordinated muscle contractions, that is these seizures usually uh, they, these patients and at the time of this ictal phase, that is uh, during the seizure phase, they have a uh, tremors in the body, that is uh, muscle contractions, uncoordinated muscle contractions or twitchings can be seen in these uh, uh, cases. And at the time of this ictal phase, there will be incontinence for urine and feces. Patients will be un involuntarily that without knowing, they, they pass urine or feces at the phase of ictal phase. And what there are various trigger factors other than etiological factors, there are certain risk factors or trigger factors which will actually trigger the epileptic attack. They include stress when patient is under severe stress uh, and physical or mental exhaustion and the sleeplessness that is sleeplessness also is one of the major uh, triggering factor for epilepsy. Any infections, high fever, drugs and alcohol, loud noises and different light and visual patterns are also triggering factors for epilepsy. Coming to mechanism of seizures, these seizures usually have, uh, they manifest as different mechanisms. They, they can actually uh, come as high frequency burst of action, action potentials and there can also be hypersynchronization. And coming to simple partial seizures, in this type of seizures what happens is consciousness is unaltered. Patients are usually conscious but this will last only for few seconds and it involves the bodily movement. This may progress to complex partial seizure or a generalized tonic-clonic seizure. One important thing to be remembered in case of simple partial seizures are patients are usually conscious. These also, this uh, simple partial seizures manifest Jacksonian march, thoughts paralysis and epilepsia partialis continua. These are the three major uh, pathognomic features of simple partial seizures. Then we have complex partial seizures where they will have automatism, nausea, Sweating, skin flushing, dilated pupils can be seen in these cases and loss of consciousness and there will be changes in the personality or alertness. Patients are usually, uh, they have a behavioral change in case of this complex partial seizures. Now coming to petit mal epilepsy. Petit mal epilepsy, in this condition there will be minimal or no movements at all. Even eye blinking will also, not, will also be not there. They have an appearance like blank stare. Usually have a brief sudden loss of awareness or conscious activity and this will usually last only for few seconds and then patients will come back to the normal stage. This meditmal epilepsy can recur many times throughout the childhood. It is usually most commonly seen in case of children and there will be decreased learning ability in case of meditmal epilepsy. That ch children will often be in case of in, in a stage of daydreaming. And coming to grand mal epilepsy, also called as tonic-clonic epilepsy. In this condition, there will be generalized violent muscle contractions and patients will exhibit rigidity. 
patient suddenly loses or suddenly loses his uh, uh, temper he cries he or she suddenly cries and outbursts themselves their breathing is stopped temporarily in the, during the ictal phase and also um, their patients usually exhibit loss, loss of consciousness now this consciousness usually returns within few minutes of time but certain symptoms or signs persist along uh, along with the patient in case of this grand mal epilepsy and they usually include weakness stupor headache confusion which lasts for about few hours or sometimes few days there will be incontinence of urine and also cheek and tongue biting especially in case of this uh, uh, seizures because at the stage of this ictal phase patients involuntarily bite their lips or cheek and even tongue also and there can be bleeding from mouth in these cases now coming to atonic seizures atonic seizure is something but there is a sudden loss of muscle tone that makes a person drop to the floor usually in this atonic seizures what happens there will not be any contraction but then they, they usually lose the tonicity of the muscle and patient usually drops or falls onto the ground and this usually lasts for about few seconds it can occur even without loss of consciousness and it is seen associated with few syndromes also coming to this myoclonic seizure which is a quick muscle jerk patients usually have a quick muscle jerk in case of myoclonic seizures and they usually occurs early in the morning they do usually myoclonic seizures also will not have any loss of consciousness patients are usually conscious but still they, they exhibit quick muscle jerks and this can be triggered because of lack of sleep or sleeplessness or too much of alcohol can also trigger myoclonic seizures now coming to unclassified seizures usually there are neonatal seizures and infantile seizures as we know neonatal is a newborn just born kid there will be uh, features of this neonatal seizures include eye deviation eye blinking and movements of arms and legs can be seen in case of neonatal seizures now coming to infantile seizures there will be abrupt movements of head trunk and limbs coming to diagnosis of epilepsy every time in taking our uh, history proper history will itself gives us a, a clue and helps us to uh, make a proper diagnosis take so take a detailed history interview the an eye witness or an attendant of the patient also has to be interviewed who has observed this kind of attacks how the attack has occurred for how much time it has lost it has lasted and does the patient usually have any uh, uh, movements or rigidity of muscle and post ictal phase symptoms all this have to be recorded and general examination which includes auscultation pulse checking blood pressure heart auscultation and skin lesions visual field checking etc will help us to come to a proper diagnosis however specific questions have to be asked in case of epilepsy a uh, patient have to be asked about the events that are leading up to the attack what are the factors that are triggering uh, for these patients to uh, have that attack whether it is occurring in the time of a day or at the night time do the patient have any visual symptoms such as aura any abnormal movements can be seen in these patients also ask about the salivation whether the salivation is frothy or normal saliva or excessive saliva and drooling is seen or not and also check for cyanosis ask for cyanotic uh, features and ask the patient if he or she is having tongue biting and also ask for the post ictal symptoms that is weakness stupor rigidity headache etc all the symptoms that is usually seen in post ictal phase also have to be uh, noted down so based on these questions we can also arrive for a proper diagnosis there are various investigations that help us uh, in uh, in coming to a diagnosis of epilepsy and the type of epilepsy that patient is having which includes full blood count esr blood urea electrolytes calcium glucose and liver function test also will help us to come for a proper diagnosis serology test for syphilis hiv serology in high risk patients and chest and skull radiographs have to be taken and recent advances include computerized axial tomography electroencephalogram electroencephalogram gives us a very good diagnostic it is like a good diagnostic adjuvant in case of uh, epilepsy and magnetoencephalography magnetic resonance imaging that is nothing but mri magnetic resonance spectroscopic imaging positron emission tomography functional mri or single photon emission computer tomography also will help us in coming to diagnosis however above all uh, electroencephalogram will give us good details in coming to diagnosis of epilepsy now coming to the management of epilepsy always remember a single seizure will not uh, should not prompt us to start a uh, treatment for epilepsy however 
this should help us to go check more investigations go go for more investigations and then come to a diagnosis of epilepsy and history is also important if at all patient gives us a history of continuous seizures or multiple number of seizures within one month and uh, within month, one month period of time or in a, in a span of less of fewer months multiple number of time seizures are happening then we will go for this anti-epileptic treatment and the first line of drugs for anti-epileptic uh, treatment includes carbamazepine, phenytoin and valproic acid carbamazepine is 600 to 1800 milligrams per day in divided doses that is BID2 4 times daily and also phenytoin it, uh, it can be given as 300 to 400 milligrams per day in divided doses for 4 times a day or it can it in divided dose it can be either given two times daily or four times daily valproic acid also 750 to 200 milligrams per day in divided doses twice daily or four times daily and well, there are some other alternative drugs other than carbamazepine phenytoin and valproic acid and these include lamotrigine gabapentin phenobarbital and premidone coming to dental considerations if at all these patients are uh, epileptic uh, and patients are on this anti-epileptic drugs one of the most common symptom or sign that uh, a physician oral physician sees is enlarged gingiva that is nothing but drug induced gingival enlargement hence whenever uh, you find there is a drug induced gingival enlargement refer the pa patient to their physician and ask for a change in the uh, anti-epileptic drug that the patient is using also try maintain also uh, maintain the oral hygiene well give instructions to the patient and also uh, advise a professional oral prophylaxis so this will uh, reduce the effect of the drug on the uh, gingiva that that further causes drug induced gingival enlargement next is you have to provide a normal care that is well controlled seizures they usually pose no management uh, problems if at all patient is having a seizure attack on the chair stop your procedure put all the sharps away from your dental chair if needed Put the patient, uh, keep the dental chair to its lowest position or shift the patient onto the ground and wait until the seizure attacks complete. Uh, and then if poorly controlled seizures, consultation with physician before a, your dental procedure has to be taken. And patient is very anxious and sometimes anxiety can be a trigger factor. So uh, uh, consult the patient and try to reduce the anxiety. Think about any uh, anti-anxiety drugs if patient is uh, very uh, anxious. Uh, otherwise uh, a very good counseling can help the patients in reducing their anxiety also be alert of the anti adverse uh, of the adverse effects of the anti convulsants such as this uh, uh, gingival enlargement and consider placing a ligated mouth prop at the beginning of the procedure because uh, if at all patient had a seizure attack so you can prevent uh, patient uh, taking or you can prevent patient uh, uh, swallowing any of the equipment that is being used thank you